Hello, Mike here at Game from Scratch. Today we're going to be taking a look at an old school 8-bit, 16-bit paint style application called, and I've always called this ASE Sprite, but it's actually ASE Prite. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but anyways, uh, ASE Prite uh, 1.2 was just released yesterday, I believe it was. And in checking that out, I decided, you know what, this is kind of an application I would share with all of you guys. Um, it's very much, again, geared towards that uh, 18... Uh, sorry, that 8 slash 16 bit style paint style, but you'd be surprised at what is packed away in this editor. Now, this is not a completely free package, um, but it is quite cheap. So if you go to aseprite.org, um, um, you can buy it here for 15 bucks. Uh, there's also a free trial available. It's actually what I'm running today. Uh, it's fully featured, so you can do 100% of what we're going to look at today, except for you can't save. Uh, so really that's the, the kind of the downside to the trial, but it's, it gives you a very good idea if it's worth the $15 or not. So without further ado, let's jump into ASC Prite um, and uh, let's create a new uh, graphic. Now you're going to notice it uses this kind of retro back to the whole deluxe paint UI. I kind of wish people wouldn't do this. I get why they do it, but um, you know what? High DPI fonts and such have come a long way and the throwback UIs are not necessarily a good thing in my opinion, but other people just eat this stuff up. So it does come down to a matter of opinion. Now the nice thing is uh, I am running on a high DPI display and it actually scales up very nicely, which is actually a bit of an exception in this world today. So um, the UI is perf uh, perfectly functional, uh, but you may not like the retro aesthetic. It really comes down to individual choice. Uh, so here I am creating a new sprite. I can choose the dimensions of it, obviously. Uh, we can choose how the colors are gonna work and I can work with a straight out um, index palette if I want. Sometimes people are working with a very fixed uh, number of colors. Um, so you can set that. So basically your paint, um, you're using eight bits per pixel on your image that are basically lookup tables into a set palette. Um, you also can set the background to white, black, or transparent. And we can set up the pixel aspect ratio. We'll go ahead with normal here. Uh, so this is our 32 by 32 bit sprite. Now then one thing you'll notice right away is very quick zooming in and out, which is very nice. And we can pan around like so. Now this is what you would call a fat, uh, fat bit editor. Um, so basically you can pick your pixel color over here. See we're in uh, the pencil mode like so. And you can draw one pixel at a time. So what I'm gonna do is a very quick throwaway example. I'm gonna use the line tool down here. We'll do a quick look down the tools available for painting. <coughs> Excuse me. So you'll see down here, uh, you click on something and there's multiple options there. You can actually find almost all of the tools you expect from like a Photoshop type experience are actually here. So you've got your magic wand, your different selection mode, your, I believe that's the magnet. Um, you've got a spray can or a pen. You got eraser mode, you got color select, uh, you got a zoom or a pan tool, uh, both of which you can do just using middle mouse button or scroll wheel anyways. Um, you've got move and cut. Uh, you've got, what is that guy? Uh, paint bucket, so paint fill or gradient fill. Uh, you have a line tool or a curve tool. Uh, you have different uh, polygon or shape tools available here. Uh, you have a contour tool and a polygon tool, and we're gonna go ahead and use the polygon tool for this example. I'm just gonna create, like I said, a very simple uh, example. I'll use this brown color right here. Now you'll notice this palette is um, pretty simple so far. Uh, we can actually extend out the palette so we have a lot more colors. We can also make the tiles bigger or smaller, like so. Uh, so if I want to have you know, 256 colors over here, I could just expand that out and they will all show up. Uh, let's go ahead and pick that brownish color right here. We've got the polygon tool selected, and I'm creating just basically a simple torch. All right, so there is my outline shape. I will go back to my pen tool. We'll add a little bit of interior contour to give it a more wood-like look. There we go. Excellent. So you can see down here the zoomed version of what we're dealing with. Uh, so now I'm going to add just a little bit of fire. We'll go back up here and we'll select our spray can. Uh, we've got our spray width at four. And I'm going to go ahead and let's change this guy out to a slightly redder red. Hmm. I thought I could change it that way. I may be wrong. Okay, well, I'll just pick it directly this way. just spray out some color like so and 
to give it that a little bit of je ne sais quoi. And then let's put some smoke around the outside edge. Okay, that was a lot of smoke. All right, so there's my absolutely terrible torch. Now here's where ASC Sprite or ASC Prite starts to really shine is when you start getting into animation. So you see down here, we can have multiple layers. So I can do a layer uh, above or beyond or behind. So I could go ahead and create a new layer up here. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. So you see like so. With it selected, I can grab it and move it to the background. And that's exactly what this could be. This could be just a solid color background layer like so. So you can have layers in front, in behind, etc. You can also have a fair bit of control over what that layer does. Uh, so just like in a Photoshop, you can have uh, the way that the, the layer interacts with other layers. Um, so you can change it to so screen dodge, color dodging, uh, lightning, blurring, overlaying, uh, hard lighting, hue, color, luminosity, etc. So you've got a lot of fine deal controls over it. Um, in this particular case, I don't actually want it on. What you can see here is my layer one, what I can do is go ahead and start adding frames to it. And that just did a straight up copy of my torch. So now I have two frames here, one here and one here. And what I can do is on the second one here, let's just modify our flame slightly. So come up here, let's add a little bit of orange. So. And then we'll add one more frame. Toss in a bit more of our red. And get this delete. We'll get rid of some of the. Like so. So now what I can do is come on up here and press play. And there is our very, very crappy, quickly created torch animation. Now, obviously, uh, you might find that one a little bit fast, but we can change down here. Um, you can change it at a per frame level. So I could come down here. Uh, where did it go? Oh, it's up here. And I could set the uh, duration, or I can do it up here frame properties and we'll set it so that it's say 500 milliseconds per frame. And now when we play it, oh, did I only have one? Oops. And there is our torch over time. Now the other cool thing is when you're working on your animation and I'll use a bit of a nicer one here. We'll do a quick ball animation. Uh, so let's just start off with a new image. Another th thing that you'll notice here is you got nice tile uh, support. So you can have multiple tabs going with multiple uh, uh, animations going on. And we'll come down here and we'll create a filled ball. Uh, we will make this a silver ball. Like so. So there is a very simple ball in a very simple uh, drawing. So what we want to do is have this guy bounce over a couple of frames. So I'm going to come down here and just create a new frame like so. And what we can do is grab this guy. So what we actually want to do is grab him. So frame one, frame two, frame one, frame two. And we get add a new frame. Like so three, new frame, frame four. Now you're gonna notice that my animation is kind of crap. I kind of went, yeah, yeah. So let me just finish out my animation. So it's five, six, seven, All right. so go ahead and play that. You'll see, you know, so that's not the smoothest of animations. What would be nice is to actually be able to see the difference between them. And you can do exactly that. What we can do is turn on something called um, onion skinning, very common technique in animation in general. So come up here, uh, it's under view and show onion skin. So what you're seeing here is the next frame of the animation. So you go boom, boom. So you can see the previous and the next. So if I find, oh, that's, that's not very good. So I go back to two. Make that a little bit smoother. So let's just move this guy over here a little bit. Three. Yeah, once again. All right, so that's looking better. 
four, five, six, seven. All right, so we got a much smoother animation now. So that's where the onion skin really comes in handy. And again, you can turn that right back off, come down here to go to turn that off, like so. And then what I can do is I can take all of these guys and I can create a new tag. And we will call this guy bounce. Basically, I'm just creating a named animation at this point. So it goes from frame one to frame seven. And we can check how to actually um, have the animation play. So what I'm gonna do is ping pong it. So when it gets to the very end, it'll all now reverse itself. So I'll go ahead and play this. So, like so. So you get an idea of what the animation tools are like in this package. It's, it's a pretty uh, impressive package, to be honest. Uh, uh, you can export out. Now this is, again, is the trial, so I don't have full access out, but I can also generate sprite sheets. There's also a command line interface so that you can build it directly into your workflow. Uh, so if you have some like post compilation work to do, uh, that option is there. Um, you'll see we have the ability to create uh, custom brushes. We've got some special effects we can work with here. Um, you can obviously rotate, flip, uh, transform your image under sprites. So most of this, but you can change things up there. We've got layer and support. We didn't really touch on much, but uh, as you saw, there's the different modes and blending options. So we can create as many vertical layers as we want. And obviously the order that they're drawn is the order they're drawn on top of each other. Uh, the frame stuff we just saw right there uh, for uh, creating an animation. Uh, selection tools basically coming up. Uh, we can go into full screen mode. So let me F to toggle between the options. So if you want more of a clean workspace to, um, you know, do what you need to do, that option is there. Uh, you've got tiling options, so you can create tileable, uh, repeatable patterns. Nice for creating textures, uh, for example. Um, and really, that's kind of about it. Now, if you want, we'll jump on back to ASC Sprite. Do be sure to check out their page. You see here, uh, they have a full list of their actual capabilities. I just did a really quick intro to what's uh, available here. You can see there's the layering support, um, advanced animation tools, way beyond what I've actually shown today. Tag framing we saw in action. That's the naming thing we saw. Um, the onion skinning you saw. Uh, advanced palette control, advanced alpha options, color wheel for uh, choosing colors based on harmonies, um, different shading modes, shading ink. Where did I say? I didn't actually use that, but um, for great for creating shadow and lighting effects. Um, the rotation, blend modes, custom brushes, tile modes, and then we get into some of the export abilities here. So you can export a ping, ping sequence, so basically a bunch of pings in a row based on your animation. Create an animated GIF, create a sprite sheet directly um, from ASC Sprite or ASC Prite. Um, yeah, so this is, there's image conversions available from the command line, and you can also create a texture out. This is once again from the command line, which is uh, basically a sprite sheet with a uh, index file for use in certain games. And that is essentially it. Uh, that is ASC Sprite, and it is only 15 bucks. So if you like the UI and you're looking for a pixel-oriented editor with animation support, this is a pretty solid choice. There's uh, yeah, there's not a lot of negatives. So eventually, so available at asepritee.org. I will link that in the comments down below. And that's it for now. Let me know what you think about doing these uh, profiles on various different game tools. Do you want to see more of these? Do you want to see less of these? Do let me know that in the comment down below as well. And I hope you did enjoy that. If you did, of course, please do click like. And if you're into game development tools and tutorials and everything else, uh, hit subscribe. And hopefully uh, you'll find a lot here to like. All right, that's it for now. I will uh, see you all later. Goodbye.